As the start of school gets closer, the battles over the return to classrooms in many Massachusetts communities are reaching a boiling point. Teachers in Andover voted to enter their classrooms today, quote, under duress, and passed the no-confidence vote against the town superintendent after a lawsuit was threatened over several teachers working on the lawn in front of schools yesterday. Town officials called it an illegal work stoppage, but teachers said they were still working while protesting the school committee's decision to start the year with a hybrid learning model because they feel the school's buildings are not safe enough to protect staff or students from the coronavirus. The Newton Teachers Association also recently cast a vote of no confidence in the superintendent there and called on him to resign over his handling of the district's reopening plan. Newton was first planning to offer hybrid and distance options for all grades, but will now be all remote for most high school and middle school students to start. But even the remote plan isn't sitting well with many who've been rallying against state guidelines that call for all teachers to be in the classroom when delivering lessons, even virtual lessons. And this week, some of the top teachers the state in the state are making their case in a new Boston Globe op-ed powerfully titled, Trust Us Like the Heroes You Said We Were. In it, they write, these guidelines show an alarming lack of concern for the safety of our learning communities, as well as disheartening disrespect for educators as professionals. Two of the authors join me now, 2019 Massachusetts Teacher of the Year, Jamil Siddiqui, who heads up the math department at East Bridgewater High, and 2020 Teacher of the Year, Takeru Nagayoshi, who teaches English at New Bedford High. And by the way, we also invited State Education Commissioner Jeffrey Riley to join us, but he was not available. Gentlemen, good to meet you, and uh, I'm honored by your presence, frankly. Congratulations on your honor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Jamil, if I can start with you, how did this collaboration of Teachers of the Year come about? Um, it came out uh, the Friday that Desi released the guidance. I, I was home for that Friday night sitting on my couch, and I got an email from Sidney Chafee, the 2017 uh, mm -hmm. Massachusetts Teacher of the Year, who then went on to become the, actually the National Teacher of the Year. And yeah. Sidney and I have known each other for a while now, and she reached out to the last four or five state teachers of the year and said, what's your opinion on, on the guidance that came out today? Because I'd really like to get together and, and discuss it with you guys. And that was kind of the, the, the beginnings of it. Pretty exclusive club, I should say. You know, Takeru, I just read a, a piece, a line from your uh, op-ed saying that uh, guidelines show an alarming lack of concern for our safety, as well as disheartening disrespect for educators as professionals. How does the disrespect manifest itself, in your opinion? I think we were tapping into a lot of the frustrations our educators are expressing right now. Uh, why is it that in a reality where leaders across the country, including our governor, are encouraging their citizens to work at home, are teachers the ones who can't be trusted to do their work from home, right? Um, when I think about educators, we are the most innovative, we're the most collaborative and hardworking people out there. And when I also think about accountability to make sure that the teachers are doing work, there are many different ways to do that without necessarily putting ourselves at risk. And so uh, the piece in many ways is a culmination of those frustrations and trying to make sure that that word is out there. Do you worry, Jamil, first with you? I mean, I read some of the things that your students said about both of you when you uh, won Teacher of the Year, and it, they were so beautiful. I, I just, they were beautiful. Do you worry about potential damage this does or what effect this has, let's put it that way, on students and their parents when they see such a divide between those who teach in the schools and those who run the schools, Jamil? Oh. First and foremost, I just want to make it clear that all of us, everybody on both sides wants to be back in school. We want to be back yeah. in person. We want, we want to be teaching our students. You know, and that, that, that's, that's what we want to be doing. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what we love doing as educators. Mm. But this is a different situation. This, this is about safety. This is about, you know, um, a global pandemic that's, that's come and is now in our midst. And we don't want to put our, our, our brethren teachers in a position where they could be unsafe. And until we can guarantee the safety of, of the educators and the students alike, anybody who walks into the building, I think that that's got to be the number one priority. So, Jamil, do you think that Charlie Baker and Jeff Riley either don't understand what the conditions are or they don't care what the conditions are? It's got to be one of the two from your perspective. Yes. Well, I think it's it, it's it's hard to to make it that simple because there are so many different districts and schools are in such different conditions. Like for instance, my building, fairly new, built in the last seven years. Okay, 
But in my same district, we have um, a, a middle school and a central school that were built in, in the 50s. So now you start talking about the HVAC, the air circulations in these buildings. You know, it, every district has the same situation, I think, that, that the different buildings from different eras, it, it's tough to make sure that all these buildings are ready to go and, and to make just, I think the teachers, I think the, the students, I think the parents feel safe and comfortable making sure that we can get back in there. Do you feel, uh, Takeru, do you feel that uh, the students and parents with whom you've been in touch, that they support what you guys are doing? it's all over the place. I, I do want to make clear, Jim, that again, it's not an attack on DESE or the commissioner. Jamila and I, as Teachers of the Year, have worked really closely with DESE, including being on part of the reentry commission uh, and committee as well. And so we really get that there is this near impossible task of having to guide districts around so much uncertainty with, with so many stakeholders. And, and that being said, we are really proud to serve uh, with an institution like DESE that by and large respects our expertise and input. But to give my context as an educator who works at an urban high school that serves low-income communities of color, like we know what the research says, right? Uh, COVID has impacted communities uh, like the one that I serve in, uh, then say- But they know uh, that too, more. right? Yeah. They know that too, don't they? Yeah, and, and I think what I'm trying to say is that when we're making these decisions, it's really important to make sure that the teachers are a part of these conversations yeah. and that we're not necessarily um, making all of our educators uh, you know, have a one size fits all policy when it comes to mm -hmm. something like reentry. You know, starting with you, Jamil, it, it seems to me that regardless of how this reopening plays out, that, and despite how committed, not just the two of you, and, but all of your colleagues are to the work you do, that kids are not gonna get the quality of education this year that they need. Uh, I mean, that's to me a given, whether it's hybrid, whether it's remote, whatever it is. Do you spend time thinking about how this hole that's being created is ever going to be filled for this generation of kids? Jamil first. Yeah, um, I, I think you're right. I think we're, we're being asked to be in a situation that, I, to my knowledge, no one's ever been put in before. I mean, the way we left schools in the spring, kind of just at a moment's notice, and now the, yeah. the you know, where we are today. So I think it's going to be a work in progress. I think we all have to have a little bit of understanding about that. I know that in my situation, the teachers I talk to are, are working hard and trying to figure out what is the best way to reach our students, to make sure that our students are educated uh -huh. and that they develop appropriately. Um, you know, I, I think that sometimes we've got to take a look at the, the curriculum that we're doing and say, you know, let's get through what we can get through. Let's make sure we're giving a quality education on what we're getting through. But I also think that whole emotional, social piece of making sure our students are developing is equally important, if not more important. So I think that's, you know, these are two big issues that we're focusing on and trying to make sure that we can reach our students through the various different um, uh, methods that we're going, whether it be remote or hybrid or, or right. in person. Takei Rube, we only have 45 seconds left. Do you worry about this transitional time? I can't think of a better term. Whatever this length of time is before we return to, quote, normal in a classroom? I absolutely do. I think about not only the academic effects, but also the socio-emotional effects, not just on our yeah. students, but also our educators and everyone in the school community. Uh, gentlemen, are you hopeful kind of people? I assume if your kids love you like they do, you must be. Are you hopeful about the future? You're both smiling. Is that a yes, Jamil, first from you? Yeah, I, I'm hopeful that we get back to in school. Like I said, I, I love being in person. I, I know Takuru does too. We love being in front of our classes and, and building the relationships with them. And, and I can't wait to get back to that. How about you, nope. Takeru? Hopeful character? I, I feel like I have to as a choice, right? It's an industry where optimism and hopefulness has to prevail, uh, not just for our own sanity, but also for the sanity of our students. You know, gentlemen, I feel just a little bit of what I think your students feel in the classroom in your presence. I really appreciate your time, Jamil Takeru. Thanks for your work and thanks for being with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us.